Welcome to Canberra Metalheads. This is a very special episode of the show. The second time I've had um, the guests on. Um, first time in in um, in the same studio as well. This is Stupid Old Studios again, returning for another Melbourne edition of the show. We have episode ninety. Lucy from Armored Angel. How you doing, mate? Very good. Yourself? Good. Very good. Excellent. Glad to Excellent. have you back on the good show. Thanks for having and, me back again. And I mean, the last one I edited um, with only one camera and a GoPro. Now we got multiple um, setups. Oh, so right. nice. If nice. people are listening to this episode, do yourself a favor and head to the YouTube to watch the video for this because it's a, it's a, it's. I like I like watching, you know, like even if I'm listening to an audio version, I Google, you know, the band members to see what yep. they look like so I know who's yep. talking. Yep, and you're catching the nuance and the expressions and yeah. body language and this kind of thing. Yep. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, but um, it's it's really good to have you back on the show. We kind of did good a two-part last time because we yep. had you solo and then again with um, with Slats from um, King Parrot, King Parrot yep. who are now touring um, in yeah, the States with uh, Phil yeah. Ensemble. Yeah. Good for them, yeah. Um, which is really cool, man. But um, and uh, every, everyone was saying to me, you need to get Lucy back and need to ask oh, cool. these questions. You need to do all this stuff. So it's really good to have you back on the show. Um, my brother um, actually sent me some to ask you as well. So I'm going to warm up with a couple of things that my old that my my brother who wanted to be here but um, wants to prefer to do it in person. Yeah. Um, so next time. Um, next time he um, can make the trip to Melbourne, might be able to G something up with him, even if it's just to catch up and say good day. Yeah, but, cool. um, that'd be great. Yeah, he, I, uh, he lined me up with a vintage, uh, unused uh, tank patch from their yep. first album. So yeah, I'm forever indebted to that man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. he's a he's a really big fan of you, man. Like oh, he cool. he actually got me onto you. So it, he was he was kind of like fuck. You know, um, like when I showed him the stuff I got from you last time with the cassette and stuff, he was just like, oh, you bastard. Like, oh, cool. you know, so he was. Yeah, I, I should have bought uh, two copies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got I got um, two from you last time, which I haven't. I've still have to give it, give him the second one. So yeah. I've got a little, little um, fucking Christmas pile there ready for him. Nice. Um, but yeah. And like I said. It, what his is mine so like we don't buy the same sort of stuff like yep. you know if, doubling up yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. either way i'm like um whoever goes first the winner the the one that lives on has the ultimate record collection for the exactly. remainder of their life yep. Yep. <laughs> and hope you don't die in a multiple <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah we, we're like the beatles who travel in different planes and shit exactly yeah. um so but, one gets to inherit yeah <laughs> Yeah, and if you're lucky, you get the old man's collection because he has a first pressing of um, Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath as well. Oh, nice. Like nice. that he bought when it came the out. The original when it first was released. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, all right, so he, he was um, he was um, he was he was asking. Um, so you've worked with um, he wrote he wrote this as if I. would needed to ask someone that I've never met before. So it's very, like, well-spoken, all right? Yep. He's, he's very proper. He handwrites letters and shit. Yep. You've worked with an impressive array of people and musicians over the years. Yep. Is there anyone in particular that has been your favourite or stand out to work with or play with? Um, everyone's unique in their own way. Yeah. <laughs> How diplomatic. Yeah. Um, Jazz Coleman was an experience. Yeah. That was quite an experience working with a paid producer from a uh, from Killing Joke. So yeah. we paid him as a as a producer. Um, so that was quite a quite an interesting experience, insightful into the music scene. He signed to many different labels, worked with many different artists. So um as for sort of the pinnacle of knowledge and experience, I'd, I'd have to say Jazz Coleman. Yeah. Uh, and for personality, um, dare I say it, several of them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he was a bit bit up and down yeah. uh, depending on the environment, which makes awesome. makes him the creative genius yeah. that he is. You it's know? like choosing a pair of sunnies at the petrol station. You can spin it if you don't like the side <laughs> yeah, you're on. Exactly. Let's move it to the other <laughs> side. Yeah. Excuse me, spraying all over your microphone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, what the, that's an extra 10 bucks for that. Yeah, yeah. 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 I have to pay cost. to get – I have to buy the cover so I can keep that in the collection. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, yeah that, that's that's interesting um, to work with um, 
because I've always, when I read that question, I thought of other artists. But when you think of producers as well, that yeah. adds a never la- another layer of it. Yeah. Well, I didn't even think of artists. I thought of all the members that all had been the, in the yeah, band, you yeah, know, yeah. my mind didn't even go there. So yeah. it just goes to show there's different, many different facets to the one question, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, exactly. Like I know, um, I know that um, like, for example, a lot of really um, sort of out there producers and stuff are usually really great at producing stuff but then like the social skills are like not the best so i've heard stories of people that are like in the studio to do production stuff and they'll be like nah um like you need to like leave me alone for a bit to like work on this you know so but but then you get it and you're like oh this is why it's so good because they've got such a unique perspective exactly yeah yeah that's exactly it yeah yeah. Um yeah he do, he does have a, he's got a couple here I'll just choose another one from from sure. the list. Um now uh, uh so again this is in his voice I'm going to do him a favor and read it exactly how he wrote it cuz yep. I'm sure if I try and summarize it yep. it won't yep. be you exactly what he asked. Yeah yeah. Yep. Um that's how I used to read when I was in school. I would just read and summarize it and they'd be like, it doesn't say that. And I'm like, yeah, but it kind of says that, yeah, you that's, know. That's your interpretation and your, your yeah. Maybe I'll good, of it. Yeah. Maybe I'll be a good producer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cut it, cut, strip it down and <laughs> give them the shortened version, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a remix of the of the original. Yeah, um, so the uh, so Armored Angel is considered one of uh, the founding bands of Australian metal scene. But um, who did you consider to be the band that – uh, really got the ball rolling for the uh, for metal in Australia. So, as in your influences for the Australian for for Armored Angel. Oh well, there weren't too many local ones around back in the day, and there wasn't much of a network. Um, we did have a couple of pubs in Canberra back in the early eighties that would put punk on. Yeah. Um, uh, I can't even remember them. I used to roadie at a couple of them. There was a specific place in. Um, uh, Woden called Floyd's. Okay. It was upstairs, smaller pub. Um, I saw Almost Human there, which mm. were an Adelaide band. Yeah. Um, so I guess by the name, a bit of Kiss influence there. Yeah. Um, uh, but, yeah, there, there weren't too many sort of sort of bands sort of doing the rounds in, in metal. I mean, I remember bands like Lightning Rock, Bengal Tigers, and probably the band that would have kicked everything off and that got more mainstream sort of press would have been mortal sin yeah for sure you know we used to go up to sydney and see them at you know seven hills and st james seven hills in um Parramatta and um yeah uh st james tavern in the city you know we'd go up and and, and make a time of it and take a couple of car loads up from canberra because yeah. not much was coming to canberra you know yeah so it was quite an in- insular sort of scene and then that thrash metal scene just sort of took off and all the sort of underage kids got into it and, and you know mortal sin was sort of on the cusp of that and sort of like like, uh, like we said last interview with Armoured, the burnout with them came pretty quick, you know, they yeah. rose real quick and dropped real hard, yeah, real yeah. quick. But they, I mean, you know, even before they went on their um, international tour, they, um, I think they got rid of one of their guitarists. So they hadn't sort of worked together that long, you know, mm. and all the, all the foibles came out as it, as it went along. Yeah. That's the right way of putting it. But yeah, pro- probably Mortal Sin would have been the, you know, I was a bit of a fan of Massive Appendage as well. Yeah. Um, saw them support Mortals in a couple of times and their side stuff, Festa Fanatics. Um, yeah, so there were those kinds of bands around, you know, yeah. at the time. So that was probably a bit later, once again, like sort of mid to late 80s, you know. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. So, it's like that sort of um, same era. Now, um, like I, I've mentioned this before on the show, but like I, I sort of came into the the scene later, so mm-hmm. this is kind of why I enjoy just bridging that gap between you know some of the founders of the the metal scene and yep. the and the current wave. Yep. Um, and a lot of people have said to me over the years of running Canberra Metalheads that like I should you know speak to Lucy, speak to Lucy, even all these years later, you know, yeah, um, yeah. because you can't really have Canberra Metalheads without one of the founders from Canberra Metal. Oh, oh thank you. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of talk about you know um, like Impact Records and yeah. all that and that sort of stuff. What was it like starting something that didn't already exist? Um, yeah, like I said last time, it was pretty hard work. 
um, there wasn't really much of a <clears throat> much of a scene for metal like we um we rehearsed in the basement of the Charmwood Tavern, <laughs> you know, earlier on. Um, uh, and who was the know, lineup then? Uh, the lineup uh, that would have been Dave on drums yep. and Rick the singer. Yeah, uh, that was the Baptism in Blood lineup. Nice. So we managed to find um, find the basement at Charmwood Tavern yeah. and, and rendered that out. And then there was a band around then called the Revs, which. There's just sort of a, a, a rock and roll band on the circuit. You know, there was a rock and roll circuit yeah. back then, yeah. but, but not really much um, much avenue for, for metal. It was mainly cover bands and that kind of thing, you know, in the pubs and clubs, um, mainly football clubs and a few pubs like, yeah. you know, Coomer and Leet and you'd have this <laughs> sort of run. You know. um, like Goulburn yeah. and stuff or um, like that? I don't think we ever got to Goulburn. I don't think there was much of a circuit there. There was a promoter that... <clears throat> Um, he was putting running bands and yeah. he had them, you know, Marnica Football Club, <laughs> Royals Rugby Club, you yep. know, this, this kind of thing. And then they'd do Leeton and Batlow and um, Kuma. So, yeah, a few things like that. There was a bit of a bit of a rock and roll cir- sort of circuit there, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it was, it, was, it was pretty hard to break into that. We managed to get a... Um, uh, uh, a Sunday night residency at the Rose and Crown Tavern. Yeah. Um, and that was that was in Western, I think it was. was yeah. And um, it was a bit of a bloodbath, like a bit of a, you yeah. know, a knuckle on, like the, all the, ta- the taverns around Canberra yeah, were, yeah. you know, renowned for that. Yeah, I, I, I'm tavern, north side, you know? dude, so I, yeah. I know the, like the, um, like the Kayleen Tavern. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and the Ginny, yeah. ta- like Ginny Tav, yeah, like, right. and like yeah. all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, they were yeah. just a bit rough and ready, you know. Even when the basement was Darcy's Den, there's still stories of that. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, it's interesting to see the pot belly still going and all yeah. that. There was a whole strip there, you know, Captain Greg's on the other side, but then blind beggars, leather bottle, blind beggars. <laughs> yeah, there were a whole heap of them. Yeah, there's no, still like, posts people talking about. I actually found a Facebook page called like um, Blind Beggars or something like oh, that. Really? And people yeah, regularly right. still post stuff still in there talking, saying like, "Hey, yeah, do you remember yeah. this guy?" And people yeah. just still talking about it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah Potbelly is a good spot. I still, yeah. I still do gig comedy gigs there. So yeah, yeah I noticed that. Yeah, there's still gigs going on there and that. Yeah, which is good to good to see. You know, that was that was our kind of regular in the in the eighties. You know, in the early, literally the early eighties. Yeah, sort of eighty eighty one. Yeah. Wow, that's so crazy. Like, so it was like the like the like the Jamison Centre and stuff a spot then? Yes, yeah. or Ian Gillen at the Jamison Inn. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that, that was Jamison Inn. Yeah, that was magnificent. Yeah, that was when he solo toured. Yeah. Prior to him joining Deep Purple, I think. No, that's a stupid thing to say. I think he'd come out of Deep Purple and formed Gilly. Right. Yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah, Deep Purple. Um, I remember, like, uh, my old man showing me, like, you know, we are mentioning before off, off air, like, some of the early influences that got me into metal. And it was like, you know, Deep Purple, Iron Maiden, Black yeah. Sabbath, yeah. all that sort all of the stuff. earlier sort of stuff, yeah. Yeah. Um, did, did you ever have any influences from, you know, um, when you, like, I know if, when you're saying in, in metal, you had Mortal Sin and that sort of stuff, yeah. but did you have any influences, like, when you're growing up, stuff that you'd, like, pinch from your parents or anything like that that you um, listen to? No, not really. We, we, we sort of, um, my parents were a bit more conservative musically, but, um, you know, we we sort of. I and my brother grew up sort of in isolated communities, so we yeah. didn't have much. Um, oh, really? Yeah, much. Yeah, um, you know, much avenue for hearing or col- collecting anything like that. I think just as we left one of the communities, they just got TV, and so we oh, weren't really? exposed to anything like that. There was Jeez. one phone on the whole community. You know, we didn't have flush toilets, so it was wow. it was pretty isolated. Um, so I didn't. I was a bit of a late bloomer. Did, probably got into Kiss and Ted Nugent and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, at Blue Cheer uh, in about um, seventy nine. So when I was in year ten. Sure. So yeah, th- that that kind of things. What sort of, you know, was the gateway? And like I mentioned in the last interview, just sort of always looking for something dirtier and mm. grittier, and you know. Sort of heavier and faster, I guess. That's you know. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's so it sort of like came in a bit later, like that sort of like Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was a bit of a bit of a late bloomer. That's didn't, cool. Didn't sort of really resume, resonate with me till later, you know. And um I uh <coughs> probably um yeah, one of my mates, um, he was a bass player. 
his brother was a guitarist and uh, we had a jam together and uh, he lent me his dirty old bass, you know, yeah. $50 bass <laughs> through a $50 amp and it just <laughs> a guitar amp and it just distorted and was yeah. so growly, you yeah. know, and I was like, that's what I'm looking for, you know, and yeah. that was, that was, would have been, yeah, early 80, I guess. So, yeah, sort of kicked off from there. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. We didn't sort of get into too much of the early influences on the last one, so I'm yeah. trying to hit points that I didn't hit before as much yeah. as I can. Yeah. Um, I've got um, something that I actually thought of um, later after we did the last show. Yeah. Um, there's a connection that I didn't make um, in the last one, which I think would be good to bring up here. Now, we've got... Yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure if you've seen it yet or not, but in the one of the previous episodes, now my brother put on a gig down the south coast called Heathen Fest. He used to host mm -hmm. it every year. Yep. Um, and it was yeah, like I think I made patches for him for that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. we made patches for Canberra yeah, Metalheads Canberra as, Metal well. as well. Yeah. 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 Yep. yeah um, so yeah, you you've um, you've kind of in a way contributed and supported Heathen Fest since it started. Yep. Um, but one of the things that we had there now, last one was done in Canberra. We decided, or he decided, and we backed the decision to have a Canberra version of yep. the show. Yep. Um, and it sort of opened up a few more availabilities because we had multiple stages and all that sort of stuff. Now, the last one that we had down the South Coast actually was, and we didn't really get a lot of recognition for this, but the last ever gig that um, Peter Hobbs did. Hobbs did, yeah. Um, and... It was just surprising because, um, like, um, I was chatting to Luki yesterday about it and he was saying, like, that gig got him out of retirement. Otherwise, he would have never had a last gig. Yeah, right. He yeah. wasn't – he wasn't – he wouldn't have – he wasn't, didn't have he anything planned or anything. anything. Yeah, yeah. And um, now I actually did the last – interview with him before the last gig wow so him and i sat in a hotel room yep. <laughs> uh, with my host um in canberra uh, jay yep. um and he says to say um oh, nice say good day yeah yeah, yeah. Day. Yep. yeah jay to Kay, he, yep. he um i messaged him and said do you have anything you'd like to ask lucy and he said nothing just say good day and i hope yep. to see you soon yeah nice so yeah, um nice. yeah. yeah yeah um so Jay and I sat in the room. Um, Hobbs is sort of holding the mic, and he's like, he's he's dropping it. You can hear all of his like throughout the episode, his jewelry all the jewelry yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. and yeah, and you can hear him when he's talking. He's like uses his hands a lot, you know. So his other hand will be moving. He'll like, but and it's a great interview because it was just so like. Um, we didn't have specific questions, you know. I was still kind of like, the breeze, yeah, yeah, I was. Uh, to be honest, it was literally like um, meeting someone after a gig and not wanting to take up too much of their time. You know yep. what I mean? I just was keeping it kind of tight. Yep. And, um, yeah, he was happy to have a chat with us and everything like that. Yeah. And he even said in the interview, he was like, well, um, you know, just go up there, do the gig and see yep. where we go from that. And yep. it's nearly like he knew that maybe it may have been his last gig. Yeah, like right. yeah. when you listen back to it in hindsight, it's yeah. like, fuck, he might have actually thought that maybe that he was a possibility. He already been aware of that. Yeah. yeah. As he was talking. Yeah. And um, something that um, – now you may listeners may be wondering why is this, why does this have a connection yeah. um, back to this now and and I know that like Hobbs is a big influence to the Australian scene as well so there's yeah. some connection there yeah. but um, I was in the previous in a previous episode of the show I actually had uh, Joel Green from Witch Skull on on the episode and I said to him that I'd be coming down to chat to you yeah. and um, whether he had anything that from that era that might be good to talk about you know yeah. um, and. Uh, he he mentioned that um, he's like he said bring up um, bring up the time that we went to see Tyrus um, Hobbs's original band before it was Hobbs so basically the f first a, a rendition of Hobbs Angel of Death. Yep. Um, is there any anything from that that you that you remember? I think uh, it'd be interesting. Was it was for metal show? for Me metal for Melbourne '86. I yeah. think it would have been. Yeah. Yep. And uh, it was Tyrus, SAS, Renegade. Uh, I think John the Beast was emceeing at that from memory. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Good time. Just up to Melbourne for a festival. Um, oh, I think it was even at Festival Hall. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, the the rumor at the time, whether it's true or not, I'm just repeating yeah. repeating rumors, but uh, uh, put a disclaimer out there <laughs> that, that sadistic execution had driven from Sydney yeah. to Melbourne looking for a drummer. So they'd come out, they had a decapitated dog's head on the back <laughs> parcel <laughs> shelf of the car. <laughs> I don't know. It rings true for knowing the guys, you know. Sad um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um <laughs> yeah, and apparently they vandalized a whole heap of cars down, oh, right. down yeah, it yeah. must have been Swanson Street yeah, at the yeah. time, I guess, when you know, back in the day when uh, parking was along there. Um mm. but whether whether that's true or not, I don't know. Cars are tougher sort of then too, so yeah. they've been harder to get into. Yeah, you exactly, ever see yeah. the, the panel on an old car, you like you know, yeah, they you take a bit of a heating. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. My first ever car was a nineteen fifty seven Morris Minor. Oh yeah. And yeah. it came down to Melbourne from the city, from the south coast. Yep. And apparently it rode off a Ford laser. Yeah, right. And then drove home. Yeah, <laughs> just crum- crumpled. Just, 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 just the took it out. Cars just yeah, crumpled, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah. So they, yeah. they they came down for that. Yeah, yeah. So that that was the talking point of the weekend. But yeah, other than that, it was just yeah, some some really good <laughs> bands, a really good time. Like it just um, probably the band that probably does it for me more recently would be Bastardizer. Yeah, it's just um, seeing them. Um, they've just got, it's very reminiscent to me of that time, like yeah. seeing those bands. It's like you're on the cusp of something about to happen. Sure. Um, Stalker's another good one, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, there's lot, lots of good lots of good Melbourne bands going around at the moment. But, um, yeah, you really felt like something was brewing, you know, you know mm. what I mean? Like mm. the anticipation, you sure. know, like, ooh, Meeting a nice young lady, yeah. <laughs> not too young, of course, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a nice young lady on the night, you, you feel something's brewing. Yeah, you know? yeah, There's it's the good. anticipation. It's the you know? excitement of something new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You really felt like something was happening back then. You know, yeah. so you're on the cusp of of something um, innovative. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, and yeah. Exciting and stimulating, and you know. Yeah, uplifting. Yeah, I don't yeah. think you need a disclaimer. When you say nice young lady to a lot of Armored Angel fans, she could be 36. But, <laughs> true. Yeah, yeah. yeah when, when I worked at Impact, one kid came in and went, oh, my God, it's you, you know. Yeah. Um, because all the kids had come in after school, you know. He goes, it's you. He goes, oh, oh, man, I can't believe I'm meeting. He goes, I've got your CD at home. Oh, well, my mum does. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and this was, you know, 30 yeah. years ago, you know. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I was hanging out with someone once and they showed me a photo of um, someone and he goes, oh, this this is one of the kids that used to come to my show and he's yeah. like a middle-aged dude, completely yeah. bald, like, yeah. and he just goes like, yeah, this is one of the kids that used yeah. to, like, the, this is one of the 15-year-olds that used to come yeah. to the all-ages gigs, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, look at him now. But I think that, um, I mean, some people age better than others. Um, like, I, sometimes the lifestyle's pretty tough on a lot of people. Yeah. I think you've done quite well, man. You've pulled out of this still looking fucking rock and roll. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Living the dream, mate. <laughs> the dream. Yeah. It must be this Melbourne air. <laughs> <So> Jack Daniels <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Me, it's, yeah. It's getting out of Canberra. It's, it's knocked yeah. 10 years off you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but there was, a, there was another part to that question and um, – the other the other section of that last part was the um the um it was with uh the uh, bell street rock in 88 with the mortal oh, sin yeah, is yeah. is that um gig that mortal sin yeah. and hobbs angel yeah, yeah yeah we came down for that for yeah. that yeah that was once again innovative exciting on the you know there's there was hype around those bands as well so yeah. there was that storm in a teacup excitement that kind of thing you know um <clears throat> i remember bell street rock was advertised as a hotel so we thought we'll get rooms in there you yeah. know so we're right above right you know? there yeah and they're like oh we don't really rent rooms out we've got them here but you know if, if you're going to come down bring a sleeping bag you know oh, we're shit. like Oh, what kind of hotels? Yeah. So we're all fighting on who gets to sleep on the floor, you know, because the beds were <laughs> pretty crusty. It's the opposite you know? to normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's pretty. That's pretty. It was pretty feral. You know? Yeah, that's pretty you know, funny. It's like to renting the rooms out, you know. <laughs> yeah, they um, they it, you know, it's bad when they ask if it's for the hour or for the night. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I um, definitely have had some gigs where I've gone to which have been a bit like like that you know like not not quite like that but like um i remember i went to a gig um once where the um 
the venue was right next to the hotel that, yep. that the gig was at. And um, the funny thing was everybody was like fighting over the beds, but it was just easier to just go, I'm going to be on the floor. You guys can sort it out. Yep. I remember we had this guy with us and uh, in the morning he was the one sleeping on the ground. He was gone. Yep. But where he was sleeping, there was just a whole pile of loose change. Just He must have just laid down. It all fell all out of his fell pocket. Out of his pocket. Yeah. <laughs> and he was off, yeah, you know. Yeah. You ever have someone that gets on the booze and they go walk about, you know, yeah, like oh, he yeah, just yeah, appe- yeah. disappears yeah. on yeah. you? Yeah, that happens. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, like – but I tell you what, man, he was like – he's like a – um like a straight edge, like corporate guy during the week and then just on weekends cuts just loose. loose yeah. And you probably would have seen that a lot in gigs, like especially in Canberra, like being mm. such a like heavy corporate. Well, there's a great Aussie yeah. culture of binge drinking. Isn't yeah. There? Yeah. yeah. But the, I mean, yeah, early days with the Civic Youth Cafe and that kind of thing, the kids are just coming, you know, you've got this post, post-pubescent testosterone overdose, you know, yeah. as I uh, have quoted before. And um, kids just, you know, lashing out and going wild, whether there's, Alcohol pre pre drinks involved in yeah. that or not? I don't know. You know, drugs or whatever. Who yeah, knows? who but, knows? You know, just just kids with that natural exuberance because yeah. you'd see a lot of that, especially I noticed that working in Impact that, you know, a couple of years down the track you'd see the kids coming in for their mainstream music and they're like, oh, I'm not really into it anymore. You know mm. what I mean? So it's it 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 the metal and the aggression and the release fulfilled something at the time in their, you know, late teen years or whatever mm. and grew out of it and moved on, you know. Yeah. But um, as Steve Hughes uh, said once, uh, you didn't used to be into metal, you know. <laughs> you're yeah. either into it or you're not. Yeah, you yeah. You used to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I love yeah. Steve Hughes, man. It's like one of those things was like um, w- with uh, with metal, you, it's – is very much a way of life instead of just a music choice. Yeah, like you is, can yeah. pick the metalhead. Like if I ever go out, you know, if I'm at a cafe or something, I never knew you, I'd give you a yeah. nod as I went past your table yeah. because I'm, I, I see a, you know, motorhead patch and I, I'm yeah. like, oh yeah, you know, like that sort exactly. of stuff. You've got a recognition there. Yeah. yeah. Well, if, if someone listens to, to something that's not metal, you, you don't necessarily walk past and go like, oh, that's a good Kmart shirt. You must listen yeah. to drum and bass, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's, it's tribal, you know, it's, yeah. it's community and, um, you know, it's funny, just Facebook's opened up a whole world of, you know, I guess Instagram and that as well. You know, I don't really do much else other than those two, but just seeing people's um, lounge rooms or their collections or their T-shirt yeah. collection, their record collection, their tape collection. It's sort of like, you know, a guy in Germany, his his room looks exactly like my room does. You know, you know what I mean? We're all birds of a feather kind of thing. You know? Yeah, yeah. So it's interesting to see, you know, the when you when you see um, photos of like say the Keep It True Festival, you know, <laughs> and things like that, the, the way people are dressed, you know, yeah, the, the things there. Even the drinks they're drinking, yeah. You know, some, it's a bit yeah, like some. with the the culture that sort of started building with Heathen Fest. Yep. You know, we'd have um, like beard competitions and Viking yep. outfits yep. and yep. all that sort of cool stuff. Yep. You know, yeah, so, it all goes hand in hand, doesn't it? You know? Yeah, yeah. And I seen a there's a festival I seen recently in um, Norway, which is the Valhalla oh, festival, yeah, yep. and they fully like they do like viking dress up and everything totally embrace that culture yeah yeah Yeah, and it's it's near like a traditional viking land Mm. you know is that the one where they have blacksmithing there they do everything yeah yep they had blacksmithing works had a bit of everything man like um it, it looks really cool there's you know i have um one other deep cut here um i was gonna ask as well um so this is another one this is joel's final addition to the conversation piece um so he he wants he uh mentioned here uh ask ask about uh heavy metal holocaust 86 the concept um started from for metal for the brain oh yeah 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 so basically we couldn't we couldn't get gigs um like I was saying earlier, um, in, in Canberra, it was just so hard, you know, yeah. to get a gig. Um, <clears throat> so we managed to, um, put, put on a gig at the YMCA yeah. and, uh, we're trying to make it pretty cheap. You know, um, my girlfriend at the time who i got to give a shout out to her. So she did a, um, she did a, uh, <clears throat> two double X radio show. Yeah, I, I presented yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, yeah, back in that's the day, where Canberra Metalhead started. Oh, really? On two double X. Yeah, right. yeah. 
So 98.3 on your dial. You, you yeah, there we go. 98.3, there's a push. <laughs> Tune in, boys and girls. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so she did a course there with the premise that if you did the course there, the radio course, yeah. and you presented a show, you could you could put on a show. So she wanted to put on a heavy metal show because there was nothing like that. Yeah. Um, and they said, no, it's sexist. We won't have metal on the on the oh. station. Yeah, yeah. So that was a – so she started writing for BMA. She was doing a – a teaching and a journalism and a media course at the time. Sure. And she was like a seventh grade um, piano uh, <coughs> teacher or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, or she had a seventh grade degree, I should say. Yeah, was yeah. Doing a music teaching degree as well as yeah. audiovisual and uh, and that as well. Um, so she started writing for BMA. So um, speaking of Joel, um uh, so she wrote the article and I did the photos for um, his first band that we, we put on at the at the Heavy Metal Holocaust yeah. were called Under Oath yeah. um, with Marcus and uh, and Joel and um, and Brett and they were great. They were about, you know, 15 at the time and had that real motorhead essence and real growly. <laughs> so uh, Alan, who I'm still in touch with, um, he was the bass player in Transylvania. Yeah. Uh, he and I put on Heavy Metal Holocaust um, – and yeah, we rented out the YMCA, and then Christian protest groups got a hold that we were playing, so they tried to get that band. Oh shit! So we really had to fight tooth and nail to, you know, I think we, we got a, a, a full page interview in the Canberra Times or half page or something like that, um, where we had to justify, oh, we're really nice boys, you know, we're not into you know <laughs> sexism and devil worship, you know, and all this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So really had to fight tooth and nail because the YMCA being a Christian organisation as yeah. well, as soon as they got whiff of other Christians sort of trying to put it down. So um, because it was a big basketball court and that, we had to carpet the whole area. So oh. we had to prov- put a stage in there, all the backing. So it was a lot of work. A lot of volunteers pulled together to make it happen, but sure. it's really – it really sorted the men out from the boys you yeah, know, and, and yeah. the girls from the women. You yeah, know? yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, a few people sort of didn't turn up and the, the bass player from Transylvania, he um, he was a bit of a gym junkie and he, uh, he promised to bring friends of his along to yeah. do security because yeah. YMCA insisted we do security with sure. that many people there. You know, we had to have some level of, of authority, you know. So they were going to provide YMCA um, sort of guidance counsellors there as well doing yeah. security. Yeah. Three little kids turned up. They were oh. about 12 and it was like, well, you're no use, you know. Mm, yeah, yeah. And, um, and the drummer from Transylvania never turned up and didn't bring his friends with him. Wow. Either. So sort of, um, I guess, a bit of stage fright. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, anticipation. Got too much. Um, so I think, yeah, they kind of put a bit of a group together so those guys from Transylvania could could end up having a bit of a – bit of a bash yeah yeah so we've probably got the um sound desk recording from that somewhere my friend joe came along and recorded all that um so yeah it was, it was a lot of work and then we had to pack it all down afterwards it was a not non-alcoholic event and so a lot of people trying to smuggle alcohol in and that yeah you know, yeah which sort of could have got it shut down straight away so you know we had to kind of take it seriously whereas you know from our point of view you know yeah if you want to come in and drink so be it. That's on you, you, yeah. But if you're going to get the whole thing shut down because of that, you know, if the YMCA sees you drinking at their premises, they could shut the whole event down, you know. So, yeah, put a lot of pressure on us. And, and like I say, had to had to set up the whole show all day and then pack it down afterwards. So wow. a lot of work, a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's crazy. That, that's actually cool to hear some of the early gigs because yeah. it sounds like you guys are really up against it when it comes yeah. to setting things up, especially yeah. like, you know, anything you wanted a gig sounds like it was banned at that one, yeah. you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I heard I heard. Um, also this was like not part of the questions but just in conversation um, – chatting to joel about early gigs and he was saying about like having to run like lead cords from nearby venues because some of them didn't even have enough power yeah. outlets and yeah, stuff I think like you that you played at the griffin center as well once i can only vaguely remember that yeah someone mentioned it recently there was yeah that was sort of behind the civic youth cafe there yeah. was the griffin center there 
Well, the um, Griffin Centre is where Two Double X is now. All oh, right, it's well, upstairs there. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's right. I, that's why I know the Griffin Centre. Oh, okay, yeah, it's yeah. cool. still there and still going because I thought going. they were demolishing that whole area. You know. Yeah, yeah no, still still kicking, yeah, still um, yeah. s- still um, still hosting the the radio there. So yeah, right. oh, cool. yeah it's upstairs, yeah. but yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's a good yeah. little like, although it's you know not the best um, f- funded. You know, everyone yeah. like you said pitches in, volunteers help out. Yeah, it's and all on a voluntary basis. Yeah. Gets it all off the grounds, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've I've I heard um, stories of um, like uh, like people talk about the Nirvana gig at ANU. Oh yeah, yeah and yeah, um, that was a big one. Yeah. yeah, were you at that gig? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Was, cool. Yeah, yeah. How, what was that like? Yeah, pretty intense. Yeah, there was a lot of hype around them. Yeah, yeah. a lot of hype. Um, probably one of the only bands that sounded exactly like their record. Yeah, you know, because a lot of people at work just kept playing the fucking thing over and over, and I didn't like it to start with. Yeah, let alone having to hear it ten times a day. You know, yeah. But, um, yeah, just you know, go along. I went along to anything there. Got free tickets to all the shows. You sure. Know? So just sort of went along and yeah, made, socialized and you know made business contacts and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um. But yeah, the Nirvana show. Yeah, very very impressive. Yeah. 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 So um, I think the the promoter who bought them out l- lucked onto it. He signed the the uh, contracted them in for a tour before that album was released yeah. when they were just a little no-name sub-pop. You know, <laughs> when, when I say no-name, you know what I mean. You yeah, know, yeah. You know, not dismissing anyone's no achievements. No-name compared you know. to now. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. A little, uh, you know, a little a little band on, on sub-pop, I think it was, that they were on. And then, yeah, they just... Yeah, just signed up and just went number one worldwide sort of yeah. thing and um, they were locked into an Australian tour so the promoter just booked bigger venues and they they uh, committed to their contract and came out and it just, went, just exploded, you know. The yeah. hype was huge. So, yeah, I mean it was just, you know, a band playing lots of hype. People mm. felt like something was happening. Um, a lot of people outside that couldn't get in yeah. so... It was a bit staged because they had a big, you know, the typical news stories. Yeah. Of, oh, my God, the, the youth has gone wild, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, meanwhile, clear away so the television camera can get in yeah, there and yeah. film you breaking <laughs> in. You know, so, yeah, it was a bit a bit staged, but it was pretty intense, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, everyone claims to be the one that broke the fucking <laughs> broke thing. Broke the doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. everyone There's claims. probably that. film footage of it somewhere so you can probably uh, – yeah. Probably hold hold that one up to, we, to people. Yeah. We had this one guy, like I, I call him the tumbleweed, you know, the guy that was never sort of like in a band like myself. Yeah. I was never in, I've never been in a band, so I might be a tumbleweed in the making. Yeah, um, the but who knows? But either way, um, saying like, oh, I, I did it. No, it's because I had the big docks on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's just like, but then you have like the next guy come in and say he was the one that kicked the door in, yeah. you know. And th- I think the doors got pulled out. <laughs> so if they're claiming to kick him in, they do. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pull them up on that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that they were. Um, they were. Um, you can't. <laughs> not only did they not do it, but they're claiming mm. they pulled a push, or yeah, they pushed yeah, a pull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. The, that's, the, that's a way to keep some metalheads out of gigs. Exactly. Don't label the doors. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> they won't be yeah. able to get in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'm not trying to take it on a Nirvana tangent because I know that people that like Arm and Angel, there's very few that also like Nirvana. Um, God for that. Yeah. But also just the reason that I mentioned that is because at ANU is where um, a lot of people may remember seeing um, mm. s- some like some Canberra medal over the years. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, what sort of memories do you have from, from ANU? Um, well, once again, yeah, couldn't, couldn't get gigs, but we had, we had friend in, um, friends in, um, oh, I'm trying to remember the band now. How embarrassing. Um, we got a gig at the ANU yeah. through them anyway, is yeah. when the venue was upstairs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that was in, it must have been in 85, must have been our first gig. 1985, so, yeah. Yeah, um, first gig there, yeah. And it was, um, oh, name of the band's on the tip of my tongue. But, yeah, anyway, they they, they booked the gig and got, yeah. got us in as a support. Yep. So that was that was pretty good and we, and we – um, we rolled on from there, got a few gigs. Medal for the Brain initially was held there, but then I think the um, the board sort of made it, uh, they must have changed their policies or something and made it um, yeah. no all-ages shows because it used to be all-ages, you know. 
And they, they put a ban on the all ages, so I think that's why it moved to the UC. You know, you'd probably have to talk to Joel about that. I think yeah. he, was, he was the one running that then, by then. Um, yeah, and then, of course, Alchemist took over. So lots of things, like I remember um, yeah, Sepultura playing yeah. there, you know. Um, yeah. That was a sold-out show, I think. That was pretty big. Um, Tool played there. That was pretty big. Yeah. Um, Massive. Probably one of the best gigs I've ever seen in my life was seeing The Cure there in about 1982, I think. It yeah. was just yeah. phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Because I was getting bass lessons from a, uh, my bass teacher was a big Cure fan, so he showed yeah. me a few, you know, so yeah, sure. a few Cure bass lines. So, <laughs> um, you know, Simon Gallup was a was a big influence back, back yeah. in the day just, just from that, you know, yeah. so... My girlfriend at the time was right into him as well, so went along and, yeah, just absolutely phenomenal. One of the best gigs I've seen to this day. Awesome. Um, yeah, and that was at the uni. Um, yeah, so like I say, a lot of the early metal for the brains. Yep. Um, I remember skits from many bands, including yeah. Damaged, etc. Friend of the um, show, he's been on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, uh, he, uh, going up. Oh, who, who was it? Was it Corn that had yeah. Adidas every day? I'd yeah, 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 yeah. That one. So they played there, and there was hardly anyone there. Like, yeah. I, I don't know why it was. Like, I think that was even number one. What then, year was this? Uh, it was when Skits lived in Canberra, so it would have been. Was he in Canberra for long, or? Oh, no, I couldn't remember an exact yeah, timeline, yeah. but I, I'd say maybe a year or something. Yeah, like yeah. Um, it was. Oh, it would have been. Would have been around the time Ahmed, with Joel and Matt broke up. So yeah. around the eighty six, eighty seven, sure. maybe. Possibly eighty eight. Mm -hmm. So around there, but yeah, I remember. I remember him <laughs> going on. All my mates that worked there, security had yeah. to had to stop skits from going. Go on corn because he was like, Your band shit, it's just not metal. You know? <laughs> You're going off at corn, going like the corn, singer yeah. Jonathan Day. Yeah, yeah, they're that's at the awesome. Bar and yeah. has gone up. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, gone. So, yeah, my security mate. I mean, awesome as in a story because, like, I mean, I, I'm i more of the like two, early 2000s corn, which is when I first heard them. Yeah. And I remember seeing their live at Montreal. Yeah. Um, uh, live at Montrax, which is the venue that they did. And it was just. Like that was when, yeah, ADIDA added us the yep. song and like it's just like not metal but like that early yep. 2000s metal when like yep. Limp Biscuit and shit was all the yeah, all the rage. Yeah, Breakdown-y sort of, thing, yeah, sort yeah. Of thing, yeah. And slap bass and all that sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Instead of just like, you know, just being like a um, like like that traditional style of metal. Yeah, just I when guess it took yes, a bit of a shift. earlier stuff was a bit heavier. Yeah, my yeah. flatmates at the time were into them and it sounded pretty good, you know. Yeah, you sort of yeah. hear it and you're like, oh, I can see what he's doing there. If you're into yeah. metal, you're into death metal and stuff, you sort of can pick up yep. things. Yeah. But that, that's that's a cool story, man. Yeah, I, yeah, skits like, going off. Yeah. Skits going off because he's Get been on. of security around him <laughs> ready to hold him back from the. <laughs> yeah, it was amusing. <laughs> you would have just heard the bellowing sound of someone getting yelled at and then yeah. went out and because yeah. i mean uh skits when i had him on the show was like a lot more calm down these days yeah. you know I've seen um, him a couple of times recently well yeah. wh like i was in the green room chatting to him we were just about to queue up the interview but we were going to have to go into the back room because the front band was um they were sound checking and shit so i was like let's go out the back to yeah. do the interview bit, of peace and quiet. bit yeah. more peace and quiet and um as we're in there so he was doing a couple like meet and greet sort of thing oh yeah, yeah. and uh, one bloke came up and got him to he's like draw a skull on my arm and he did it and then he's like all right man i've got to do this interview and old mate just turns over and says to me i'm getting oh, that tattooed to get it tattooed yeah <laughs> yeah he does some good artwork skits yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah i've seen some of his recent posters and whatnot you know yeah he's doing some good artwork these days yeah yeah and i tell you what's funny we're talking about like people making claims that they can't back up someone once told me that like oh i seen skits um on the on the street in melbourne trialing like a new sort of like um like sleeping outside sort of pod that they made and yeah, i was just right. like what and they're going yeah yeah i seen it i was talking it was one of the bartenders at one of the local bars because i was chatting about metal yeah and uh, it's one of those things, like, I remembered it, jotted it down as a note. And then when I interviewed him, he was just like, no, nah, I never did that. Yeah, that <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, he's see that like, fucking yeah, person yeah, stitch yeah, me up. Yeah, he's got a lookalike. Yeah, it's, fun it's funny how the rumour mill works and the, 
someone see someone out of the corner of their eye, I assume yeah. it's someone else. Yeah, you know? yeah. And that was yeah. when he was in King Parrot as well at the time. Yeah, right. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but one of the other – so we're talking about ANU. We're ch- chatting about the um, the gigs there as well. Yep. Um, now, I've um, – mates with a guy you probably know, uh, Reggae from Rain of Terror, mm-hmm. um, and he um, – he, gave me one of the early Armored Angels. It's actually Wings of Death on cassette. Oh, wow, cool. And I showed it to Joel and he said to me, he's just like, now I'll tell you if that's a first release or not. And yep. he turned it over and he's like, it's not. And I yep. said, why is that? And he said, because my mum wrote all the numbers on all of them and you can see she hand oh, wrote really? all the from I the first I didn't even know that. Yeah, all the numbers are handwritten. So. I think someone even came up with Mysterium on cassette and I didn't even remember that it had been done on cassette. I don't yeah. ever recall that yeah okay i don't remember that either. handwritten yeah, right. i was like yeah okay well yeah, we like, would have that's done a good way to of, tell <laughs> did, did a couple of presses of it yeah. yeah yeah um it's like um it's like the um uh, my brother luke and i did some early like random recordings and uh we called it the like the probably the toughest name i ever thought of for, for so um it's just him and i yep and it's literally just guitar and bass no nothing Yep. And just random, like, influenced by, like, dark throne black metal vocals over the top. And it's atrocious. And it's only on tape. We made 13 copies. And he hand drew all of the artwork. Mm. And then I mass printed them 13. And uh, it's called Brotherhood of Blasphemy. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go for a fortune on eBay. Yeah, days, there we go. Cool. So that's yeah. the drop for the show. Yeah. Um, but I do have a copy of Wings of Death on vinyl, which is a later release. It's a yep. it's a test pressing from 2016, 17, yep. um, that I got through the guy from from Mick at the Camber Record oh, Shop. Okay, yeah. So there's a record place in um, Camber that mm. does. I think that was there when I when I left. They've been going yeah, for a yeah, while yeah, now. Yeah. He's got a good hookup on on stuff. You know, he buys yeah. albums and resells them, yeah. even for the same price, just to get the band's stuff available. Yeah, just to rotate stock. Yeah, them. yeah, which is something you like. I'm, I'm, you know, preaching to the choir here. That's <laughs> you, you're kind of the the pioneer of that. Yeah, take a hit on some things or whatever to get it out yeah, there. Yeah. Um, but he, we're talking about you know, someone will come up with something old. Um, he, they just had the vinyl sale at they hired out the polish white eagle club oh, right. and, and a record fair there, record right? f- festival there and he had a um old cassette there he said oh if you like your canberra stuff i've got this as well and i looked down there and it was a um and it was a um old canberra band i forgot the um hang on the oh we're going to come back from a quick edit where you'll see where I finally remembered the name. Um, no, but they, they, um, <laughs> they, he had a, um, old, um, uh, I'm going to have to say it when yeah. it comes to me, yeah. but he had this old cassette there, cracked case, like a one of one, yep. pulled it out and just, and, and sat it there and was just like, yeah, look, you like that. And I said, yeah. Is that for sale? He goes, no, it's just for display. Oh. So I was like, all right, so he put it aside. Yeah. Um, but it was um, it was one of those things where people get stuff not knowing that it's going to be a big band one day yeah. and they just sort of keep it to one side like demos and stuff like yeah, that. Stored in the garage or whatever, I've, back in mum's ba- um, basement. Or yeah, yeah, or, you know. Yeah. Um, like I've got a um, – I've got a um, – venom live recording um from like 86 yep. just called r oh, <laughs> it's just yeah. a live random live yeah. co- recording yeah. from a gig yeah. and uh can't go wrong with a title like that it's can you? just yeah. like and when venom inc came to canberra i was like i have to get one of them to sign this you yep. know it just never happened because you know when those guys go out to do the meet and greet they get swamped yeah. like and i just you know I, Stormed, yeah. yeah i like i'm i've I've met people in the past and you're just like, hey, I'll leave it for now and if I see yeah. him again, I'll – like I don't want to sort of um, overdo it with the meet and greet, you know. Um, I'll let some of the people that have never met him before to go yeah. and to do the thing. Um, but, yeah, I, I think that um, – I think it's cool to see people in person get shit signed and, like, and meet yeah. them, yeah. Um, which is – yeah, which is – 
it's become a bit of a bit of a paid thing now, though, hasn't it? And with like social media, the, the you price can price of pay like meet and greet these birthday days, birthday gifts, you know, call, <laughs> call out, you know, yeah, yeah, via social media and that kind of thing. You know, everything's got a price, I guess. You know, and if you can monetize something, I guess, you know. Yeah. You're not making too much money through streaming or anything anymore, are you? You know, so. I think it was a liquid tape, maybe. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. maybe. From memory, I can't remember. Yeah, right. But it was like hand drawn. Like yeah. the, it was just like original. Yeah. Be Mark Barry. And, yeah. Yeah, so there you go. Like it was an original Canberra band. Maybe I'm strategically forgetting the name, so the people don't go down to Canberra, um, yeah. Canberra Medical and uh, Medical Canberra Record Place and, and yeah. purchase the one of one yeah, copy one of one, before yeah. I can go back and make yeah, him a serious cool. offer on it. Um, but yeah, I believe it was one, Liquid or one of the other. Um, so they, early they ended bands. up signing to Warner, didn't they? They, <clears throat> but not as Liquid. I don't think was it Liquid. Then? Because I know that a lot of people say, like, there's a lot of, like, um, f- oh, so this is the point that I was getting to before. Um, we were chatting about different venues. Now, mate's Rego, he gave me that um, mm-hmm. original, um, well, not first but not second first, run. Yep, yep. Um, yep. And we are chatting about, because um, I first started chatting to reggae, we've learned about Rock Ape. Do you have any yeah. memories from the Rock Ape days as well? Or oh, we- yeah, yeah, good good times. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Met my wife there, um, <laughs> worked for reggae, played in the band there yeah. with reggae, yeah. yeah. Um, we uh, supported uh, supported Destruction through there and Destruction came back for the after party. That was the year of the fires. I think Metal for the Brain got got cancelled, oh, but Destruction right. was meant to headline it. I think, yeah, right. I think my memories, a lot yeah. of Jack Daniels has passed since then, so <laughs> might be a bit hazy, but yeah. I, I think, yeah. Hey, man, I can't even remember yeah. the, the cassette I was holding two I, days yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, if it was liquid, it probably just yeah, flowed through your yeah, fingers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it did what it's, it wasn't falsely advertised. Oh, I know, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, good, yeah, good times, good times. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, Rock 8 was a really good time, yeah. Played in Reign of Terror with Rego there. And yeah. It, it was just a, a drunken, debauched debacle, really, <laughs> you know, yeah, which is what it should be. You know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, lots of good bands through there and, yeah. 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 yeah, good times. But, um, yeah. yeah, no, I, I heard all the rundown. with. I've had Reggae on the show before and we've yeah. chatted in depth of Rock Ape Days as well. I think he was on the first, the third episode of the show. Yeah, right. um, and Jay Decay was on the first episode of the show who he then came back to be the co-host. So it's yeah, gone right. full circle. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, well, Jay was in Punishment when I used to put them on at gigs a bit cool. back in the day. So. Yeah, and Shigella, yeah. did you ever hear of the, the like, because yeah. yeah. all those guys went off to do, like, Tortured and, yep. um, yeah, all sorts of bands. Yeah. Like, that band basically dispersed to each member became their own yeah, band, right. you yep. know? Like, yep. Shigella was, like, the original of that kicked off the next wave, yep. you know, because all those members like Barry Feeney and stuff went out yep. to do bigger things like later, yeah, right. which is after Armored um, Angel, the next wave, you yep. know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they're, they're really cool. Really cool. The, all the opportunities that you made for the scene have gone out and folded tenfold in each yeah. member of every band that you got yeah. gigs for or bought records from you and stuff has now yeah. gone out to be something new. So yeah. oh, I, cool. I think everyone yeah. really appreciates that. And I think that, oh, that that's nice to be recognised, but it's a community, you know, it's not mm. just one person, you know. Yeah, sort yeah. Of like it takes it's, a scene to make a scene, you know. Yeah, well, yeah, it's, so. it's everybody, but um, yeah. I'm <laughs> – I, that that's that wraps us up at the end of the show. I really appreciate everything that um, you're taking the time, man. This has oh, been such likewise. a it's been so Great good to get you back. Um, so many people wanted to hear you back again, and I hope that I was able to co- cover off as much as I could in the time that I had. Mm. Um, one of the feedback items I got before is I talk too fucking much, so I um I'm, <laughs> <laughs> that's why I wanted. isn't that why you've got a microphone so you can talk? <laughs> yeah, actually, no, that's a good point. If you want to do the talk and you fucking start a podcast, you build it over five years yeah. and then you get to the point where someone like Lucy will even fucking talk to you and then eventually you can talk over the top yeah. of them for an hour just yeah. like I did. <laughs> so, it's your prerogative. It's your show. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, so take that. Um, yeah. But, yeah, no, um, yeah, really good. And, I mean, I'm 
not going to tease any um, anything over the top, but if we ever get to the point where Luke is available to come to Melbourne, we can do a final two brothers um, chatting to chatting to Lucy maybe. That'd be um, great. Yeah, anytime. Yeah, but it's been nearly twelve months since last time, yeah, so no, really. it's been a, it's been good good to finally circle back and to give me a full twelve months to think of new shit to ask you. Yeah. No, nice um, so yeah, cheers for being on the show. Thanks, Thanks everyone for, for listening. This has been episode ninety of Canberra Metalheads, um, and make sure you uh, tune in for the next one. Cheers, rock on. Yeah. <laughs>